Thank you, special. Yeah. Pure delicious. Pure delicious. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family love me. And that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man. I appreciate the love. Appreciate the support. Bang, bang. Let's get it, man. We out here, man. We out here, 33 years of prison stores. Hope everybody had a very special Christmas, man. Enjoyed a lot of family, a lot of good food, laughter, and fun, friendship, man. And I'm wishing all of you TBP, man, a very merry, uh, happy new year, man. So let's bring in 2023 with a bang. Boom, boom, boom. We on the road to 100K. Let's get there, man. Let's get these likes up on these videos, man. Like these videos on the way in. If you forget, like them on their way out. We trying to get to 100K. We trying to spread this positive energy in 2023. Can't do it without y'all, man. So let's go. Let's go get them, man. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about this video, man. I was talking to... Uh, I, I'm going to do a video about Keith soon, man. Call for Keith, man. Because Keith been calling me. And me and Keith was talking. It reminded me of another dude. You know, and they went to church with Keith, man. And um, this dude was a character, man. He he was a real life character. Um, small dude, man. Real small dude, man. Probably about five, six, five, six and a half or something, man. Maybe like 140 pounds. Um, dude went by the name of Reese, right? And Reese was a unique individual, man, because Reese was a a a. a Classic example of somebody who who come into penitentiary, man, and let the um, you know, the penitentiary just just absorb you, man, and eat you up, spit you out, you know, if if you let it, you have to have constant uh resistance, man, and um, you know, fight fight every day, man, mentally, physically, spiritually, you know, to maintain, man, your sanity and your humanity, and a lot of people, man, they lose that fight, you know, for whatever reason, and one of the biggest uh, reasons and one of the most uh, easiest way to do that, man, is to, is to have some vices, right? When you got some vices, man, um, you 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 vulnerable to a lot of things if you got any type of vices because when you got vices, man, they can be used against you. And what I mean by vices is habits. You know, if you got any habits, you know, or uh, if you like smoking cigarettes, you know, if they take the cigarettes and you can't smoke, you know, it, it will cause you to get outside of your character. You know, uh, coffee, man, you like drinking coffee. You know, anything that you have in prison that you have a vice or a habit of doing and you're used to it and it's a part of your everyday routine, it's a part of something that you have adapted as your lifestyle, when you can't get it or they remove it from you, then you you stuck. You know, you're going to get outside your character. But the thing about it is it ain't nothing guaranteed in prison. You know what I'm saying? Everything that you get in prison is something that they give to you. And everything they give to you, they consider that as a privilege. So they can take it away from you at any time. You know, and going to segregation is one of the biggest things, man, when you got a vice. If you out on population, if, you know, um, even when, like when they were smoking cigarettes, if you go to the hole, you can't smoke. You know, even like, you know, drinking coffee, you go to the hole, you cannot get coffee like that. So, you know, you like eating every night. You ain't going to be able to do that when you're in segregation. So these vices will cause you to be suffering more than you will, you know, normally. And more than you will with just the, 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 the suffering that surrounds you every day. So it's, it's very crucial, man, very uh, paramount not to really get caught up in vices when you're in prison. And... Vices come in all types of um, forms, man. Gambling was a vice. You know what I'm saying? Gambling is a vice. You know, um, uh, betting is a vice. All of these things, man, that can cause you to put yourself at harm's way or put yourself at risk. But one of the main vices, man, I would say is, is, is drugs, man. Getting high. If you, got a, if you got this thing about getting high, which a lot of people do in prison. A lot of people do was doing it before they came to prison. But a lot of people, after they get into prison... They take up doing drugs, man, you know, getting high because they want to numb the pain. They want to, you know, take their self outside of the reality of, of, of prison, which, you know, there is no escape from that, no matter what you do. You know, even if you, 
get high to, you know, numb the pain or whatever, you know, you're going to come down and the, and the reality still going to be sitting right there. So to me, it's, you know, it's just, uh, it just don't make sense because like I say, you're just making the situation worse. You're doubling down on the problems that you already have. You can't escape them. You know, you just have to deal with them, period. There's no other way to do it in prison but to deal with it. But like I say, a lot of dudes cannot do that, man, and they succumb to that. Now, as far as Reese, I don't know if he was getting high before he came to prison or not. I, I mean, you know, just guesstimating, I, I don't know. But I know he had a thing about getting high. He had a thing about getting high, and the problem with that is he couldn't pay for it. You know, he ain't had no income. He ain't had no, you know, no real hustle. The only hustle he had was he could sing. And, and I'm telling you, man, I get props where props is due. I ain't going to get nobody there uh, unjust do and I ain't gonna I ain't gonna get nobody no uh bad name that don't that don't earn it, you know. And um Reese, that hey, that that joker can sing, man. I mean he he was really, really talented in that area. He sung in um you know uh uh, uh, uh competitions they had in there. He sung in um you know plays they had in there. He sung on like uh, Black History Month. He be singing he anytime there's an event where People have to perform. He will volunteer to perform, but most likely he will be uh, asked to perform because he could sing that good. He really could. And he wrote his own songs. He had a lot of good songs. I've heard some of his personal songs, you know, uh, myself, man. It was, you know, very good, really good, you know what I'm saying? And um, he was a talented dude. Now, at one point I had Jerry, you know, shout out to Jerry, man, Junkie Jerry. You know, it was my cellar, you know, the one that just was so junky, man. But to him, it was it was normal. But Jerry could sing real good, too. So I remember at one time when Reese ended up getting moved in our block. He used to be next door, but he ended up getting moved in our block. You know, him and Jerry and another dude, they had a little singing, little, you know, uh, whatever you call it, uh, three people, whatever. <laughs> I forgot what you call that, you know, but... They had a little trio where they sang, man, and they was putting together songs, and, you know, they, they congregate sometimes. Plus, Jerry went to church every week, as well as Reese. So, you know, um, you know, they was like Bible buddies and whatnot. But Reese had the dark side to him, man. He used to be hiding and, you know, uh, sneaking and creeping, and he had this little sneaking, this, this little look about him anyway. That to me, I could see that he was just a sneaky dude. Where the rumor started being out about Reese as well, he worked in the kitchen, man, and the rumor was out about him, you know, that he liked getting high, but he couldn't pay, you know, every now and then somebody done, you know, pop, smack fire from him, you know, he might got a black eye or this, that, or the third, because he ain't pay his money. Now it started coming out, too, that they say Reese had got a little, you know, he had got a little loose, he had started, you know, getting a little freaky, you know, dudes done start turning him out. He owe money, he can't pay money, he's borrowing stuff to try to get high, he can't do it. And you got some of them dudes in there, they they you know, they want favors. They say, Well, you know, if you can't pay, uh if you want this and you do that and um yeah, that's <laughs> and they would say Reese was with it, you know, so um he, you know, whether, like I say, that was his lifestyle before he came in and people don't know, they don't know. But what was being spread around now through good authority that he was, you know, he was doing a little freaky stuff to, to try to, you know, take care of his, his, his drug bill, to try to take care of his uh, uh, debts that he owed store boxes from borrowing from this person, that person, this person, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul, all just so he can get high. So... You know, uh, I remember when, you know, I had first heard the rumor and dudes were saying it, man, and I remember, you know, bringing it up, you know, to Jerry, you know, because, you know, sometimes you can be associated with people that you that you be around. Now, Jerry is older than me, and Jerry had been, been in prison longer than me, so Jerry, you know, he know the count, he know what's going on, and uh, he he a low-key dude, you know, don't talk that much, and uh, but he very, very smart, he even do law work. So Jerry had, um, I ran across Jerry, I was like, man, you know, you be with the dude Reese, man, they talking about, you know, singing and whatnot, man. They say Reese, you know, <laughs> Reese doing some uh, strange things for some change, man. And um, and Jerry, you know, he started laughing. He was like, what? I said, yeah, that's what they saying about him. He was like, man, I don't know. I don't know about that. I ain't heard that. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm just pulling your coat because dude sees, but, well, you know, uh, I'll just sing with him. You know, he can sing and uh, whatever he doing, that's on him. 
you know, that was Jerry's attitude about it. But I was just letting him know just so he could be aware. But um, as time went on, man, you started to see it. You started to see it more and you started to hear it more. You know, that that's what he was doing. You know, now Reese, he, he can't pay nobody. So now he got some dudes that he'll go and, you know, trick with to get some money and then go, go get high. You know what I'm saying? So you see him now. He walking around all the time. He, he um, yeah, um. Uh, let me on, you know, and this 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 is what his junk was. This is what a lot of dudes be when they high in there all the time. Whenever that that dope hit that compound, man, they they they, they just do anything to get it, man. They live to get it. They got to have it. And if it's on there, they in a rush to get the money to get to it because it ain't gonna be there long because it's gonna sell out as soon as it get on there because it's just so many dudes to use it. And some dudes get money and they just hold on to it. They hold on to it just to wait for it to get there so they can, you know, they can be ready. And, um, you know, like I say, we're in prison, so ain't nothing coming on no consistent basis. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, so so Reese, man, he um he, he ain't had no other way to make no money. So that was the only way I guess he figured he could make money. So he willing to sacrifice his manhood, you know, to, 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 to get high. You know, this is the position that he put himself in because he got a vice in prison now that he cannot afford, and this is what he doing now. So, to me, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, I could only go from my point of view, man. To me, man, when you when you done went to them type of links, man, that's something that you can never come back from. You know what I'm saying? To me, that's just something that you can never come back from because, man, this is a part of your life. This is a part of your history. You done compromised your whole manhood, your principles and everything because you caught up on something else. So now you, you're a slave to this drug, man. You are literally a slave to this drug. And that's what he was doing, man. And it, it became common knowledge. And the only reason I say it in the affirmative that that's what he was doing because later on it was really revealed that that's what he was doing. So, um... But at this time, man, it's just a rumor, man. But he he had, you know, he had a lot of talent, man, whereas to he could have been honing his skills to try to do this or do that. And, and he didn't have a lot of time, you know. So even women, women was, was, was for some reason or another, attracted to him because he could sing. It was known over the compound that he could sing. So he used to have women that comes all from other blocks to come over there to see him on there breaking everything or they got a trainee woman that they train and they'll bring him over there and call him and say, yeah, I was telling her how you could sing or sing something for her. And when you really got talent, you can do it on the spot. And Reed, Reed used to do it right there on the spot. You get up there, start beating his chest and plugging his fingers and sing for him right there, man. I done seen him, man, make make some girls cry and tear up and everything. That's how good he sang, you know. But <laughs> little do they know he doing something else over here, you know what I'm saying. But that was, you know, all of these things that were the positive for him, he, was, he wasn't he was feeding the positive. He, he was starving the positive and feeding the negative. He was over here doing all this negative stuff, you know what I'm saying, instead of, you know, trying to prepare himself to get ready for the streets, trying to, you know, get right mentally, physically, and spiritually. He was just chasing this drug and chasing this drug, and the drug that got, you know, a grip of him where he can't stop doing it, and he, he don't have the means and the ends to provide for it, so he started doing whatever he felt like he had to do to make sure that he could get that, and, um... Yeah, like I said, but when time went on and time went on, man, people started realizing what he was doing, you know, and he had got so loose with it that he just was really walking around like it didn't matter to him. I know he heard it, you know what I'm saying? And then it was this other thing about him that this just a side note, but I had to say it when I was talking about it because this is the one thing that I remember about him the most. Man, y'all remember when I told y'all I had that cellar, man, that would not shower. My homeboy, man, wouldn't shower and his breath smelled like good God. You know, with the sock around your face. Man, Reese had that same problem, man. Reese could be talking to you from right here, man. And when he opened his mouth and started talking, man, it was like boom, 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 boom. It's like he punching you, man. His, his breath smells so bad, man. And um, there's no way in heaven that he could not know that. You know what I'm saying? There's no way in heaven that he could not know that, man. Because that's just how foul the odor was. And he just be sitting there all nodding and talking to you and like, um, yeah, and you be like, Yeah, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, he had some uh he had some real, real uh serious problems going on right there. But by him kicking it with Jerry, and Jerry was my cell at the time before Jerry left, and then Keith ended up being my cell at Coffee Keith, and then, you know, Reese was in the cell the whole part. 
I mean, the whole time he was in the pod, the whole time. So he used to kick it with 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 Keith as well. After Jerry ended up leaving, because Keith went to church too, and like I say, Reese did go to church every week too. You know, I you know what I'm saying I can't take that from him. he did. You know, I guess he had a whole lot to be praying for. You know, as we all do, but. He used to come try to borrow from me, and I had already heard that he borrowed from this person, borrowed from that person, don't pay, and people be down on him. But I did him no different than I do anybody else. I'm going to loan anybody something to come get my stuff because I'm going to let you know off the top his consequences behind my stuff. But he, um, when he first came to borrow from me, I let him know. I said, look, bro, I don't even know you like that, young blood. I'm just telling you, I done heard a lot of things about you. I'm letting you know right now, do not. Do not, under any circumstance, borrow my money if you're not 100% sure you're not going to have it. Because one thing I want to let you know and understand, I have no understanding, zero tolerance about my money. Because if you get my money and you can't pay me and you don't pay me, I'm going to feel like you're trying to carry me. There's nothing that's going to convince me otherwise. And if I feel like that, I'm going to respond like that. So I'm asking you, I know you're cool with my selling or don't come get my stuff unless you sure you got it, bro. Oh, yeah, man, I know I don't, I don't be doing that, man. People be talking about me. They don't know what they be talking about. Oh, I don't care nothing about all that. I want you to know and understand what's going on before you get it. And I don't accept nothing but my money. You know what I'm saying? And I try to make that clear to him and understand that right. But um, he never really got too much from me because I think he really understood or, or he knew you know, or heard enough about me, know that, you know, you know, duck him, go borrow from somebody else because, you know, he ain't, he ain't going to be playing with you. So, you know, he he, he was an I dude, though, you know what I'm saying, for, for all intended purposes, but he just was caught up because he didn't let the penitentiary get him caught up. He can't, now he just on a, he on a path of destruction that he can't get out of. He can't because he got the habit. He fooling with these dudes now on some freaky stuff. Um, he he old people. He stuck. He 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 in a rut that he just he uh, a hole that he created for himself that's gonna be hard to dig out of if if he can at all. Yeah, it ain't even guaranteed he can get up out of that man because like I say he he done went to to lengths that there's no turning back from, you know. So yeah, he he was in a, he was in a mean mean spiral man going down and um. You know, you can see it. You It's like a train wreck. You're watching it, but you can't do nothing about it. It ain't nothing you can do about it. You can only just watch it, you know. Then uh, along come Jake, man. <laughs> Jake, man, is a whole nother story. I got to do a video about Jake, man. Oh, Fat Jake, man. And Fat Jake is a whole character by himself, man. You know, in short, man, Jake is a... <laughs> Really, really a heavy set dude, man. Real dark skin, man. Very, very, very unkept. He don't comb his hair. He don't comb his beard. He don't take showers. He real big. He knob knee. He walk. He just like the penguin, man. He's like, <laughs> but and he work in the kitchen. He is the kitchen man. I don't know how he get away with what he get away with, but if there's anything in that kitchen that cannot be nailed down or bolted to the ground, Jake would get it up out there. This is his hustle. So, and he's a, he's a, a notorious habitual liar. He lie about everything. He climb up the tree and tell a lie, then stay on the ground and tell the truth. He is a super liar. But he's also freaked out. He like, you know, messing around with them people. So he he loved that. You know what I'm saying? He'll pay for it. He'll try to get to Bethlehem and take it. he do all of that. So now you got Reese in the pod, you got Jake in the pod. Jake making money hand over fist by bringing sandwiches out the kitchen, potatoes. He's selling everything out the kitchen, you know. So he hearing the rumors and stuff about, about, about Reese, and now he trying to buddy up the Reese. But everybody who know been locked up a long time, they know why he getting up on the Reese. You know what I'm saying? So now he up on the Reese. And this is when I knew it was going on, when I confirmed to myself, for my own self, that I knew this won't no rumor no more. Because like I said, they'll say anything about you in the penitentiary when you, when you ain't looking. You know, dudes just do that. But you have to be able to see and know and understand things yourself to decipher what's true and what's not. So now, 
like I say, Reese ain't never really borrowed no whole lot of money. He'll get something small because he know he not going to get no in debt like that with something he cannot go pay or go come store there. If he ain't got mines, he can go borrow from somebody and give it to me. You know, ain't nobody going to give him no whole lot of money, $20, $30 or nothing. So he'll borrow small stuff, seven, eight, ten dollars $10 worth of stuff or something. Boom, something that he could, he could probably pay. So I remember he owed me a little money, probably like seven, eight dollars you know, and came store day when you when I've already seen him talking to Jake now lots and lots and then the rumors are man, he be creeping down in Jake's cell, man. You know. So on store day come and I'm waiting for him to come bring me my money. Everybody done paid me but him. So I'm waiting. I don't go chase down no money. I just wait, you know, you already on the clock. <laughs> you better get it for lockdown. So boom. Um Jake come back from work. <laughs> So Jake going to come walk up to my cell while I'm up in there sitting there watching TV and uh, bring me some money. And I'm like, well, what is this for? You don't owe me nothing. He said, oh, 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 no, this is for Reese. I said, for Reese? He said, yeah, yeah, don't owe you some money. You owe you like $7 or something. He said, huh, well, this is this $8 right here. Eight. Matter of fact, it's eight fifty. You uh, just to clear his bill. So, you know, I'm like, I don't care. It's paid. It's paid. You know, I'm, I said, okay. So I take it right. So now I know what time it is. He ain't nobody in the penitentiary paying no another man bill unless something going on. You know what I'm saying? And everybody know what Jake Stilo is. So I'm like, oh, man. So I remember telling my seller, you know, who now was Keith. I was like, I told you, boy, yo, 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 your man doing some freaky stuff, right? So Keith, man, Keith is so hilarious, man. I swear I pray he get out, man. I want to, I, I need y'all to see him. So Keith, like, for real, man, for real. I said, yeah, for real, man. He doing, he doing freaky stuff, man. I told you, but watch that dude, man. Keith talking about, <laughs> man, I can't believe he doing that, man. Man, he young, too, man. Dad, man. And then this was one of his favorite things, man. And I know I can't help but bust out laughing when he, when he say this, man. He come trying to say it how he say it, man. When he says it often, when he, something just get him, he say God Almighty. <laughs> so I say, I say, keep me doing some freaky stuff. Keep saying, God Almighty, man. Why he do that, man? Why he do that? I say, he strung out, Keith. He strung out. He ain't got no way to get it. That's the only way he got to get it. He said, he want it like that. Say, yeah, he must want it like that. So anyway, you know, so then people start seeing him. He getting more and more loose because... Now somebody got a plug, so 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 the dope flowing on the compound, so you got to have more money now because dope here more often. So, man, dude start seeing him, you know, go down there. Jake's up in the corner, too. He go down there, next thing you know, he 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 stand in front of the cell talking to Jake, and, you know, everybody out in the block, and they moving around. And then next thing you know, when the people get ready to holler a cell break where they close the door for 30 minutes, you got to be in or out. They down there standing, then, you know, you might just, you know, just, Look at your surroundings and you notice they down at the corner say that's talking. And when people start hollering, they give me a lot of doors and they say, you know, both of them gone. You know what I'm saying? They done disappeared in the cell. Boom. Doors closed. They in there 30 minutes, 45 minutes with the door closed with the curtain up. They definitely ain't in there uh, reading no Bible. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it, it was crazy, man. So then dudes start seeing and that dude know it. You know what I'm saying? So dudes is really, you know, saying what's going on to him. And he can't say nothing smart because the first thing he say, anything smart or slick to somebody, that's the first thing they're going to come out their mouth with. They're going to put you on blast. So, you know, and Jake, he he going to, he, he, now he, he, he out there. He, you know, he paying this man bill. Now, V's is, is taking advantage of, he bond from this person, bond from that person, bond from this person. Jake doing all the hustling all over here in the kitchen, bringing back everything, selling everything, paying off all Reese bills. You know, paying bills here, paying bills there. Man, Reese running up hundred, hundred ten dollar bill he owe this dude, uh, eighty dollars he lo Jake taking care of all of that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it, it was just a crazy situation, man. Where you seen Reese now, man, you can't even see him, man. No matter what, he just running around, he high all day, huh? It, you know, and it, it was just it was just a train wreck to look at, man. Cause the dude was young; he was a young too, man. He was Reese, Reese was in his twenties. You know what I'm saying? And um, it just it just was crazy, man. And uh, you know, and like I say, you got it in there like that. Jake don't care, cause Jake getting what he want. You know what I'm saying? Jake been locked up a long time, but that's another part of his life. I'm definitely gonna tell y'all a story about Jake. 
but he would claim he locked up longer than he was. But I remember being in different places with him over the years, but he claimed he'd been locked up the whole time. A lot of other dudes said, man, that man went home, came back two, three, four times, all this and that. But he just lied a lot, so you can't take nothing he say for, for, for granted. But he run around just paying all the bills and paying all the bills, and Reese just going around just borrowing from everybody. Reese got caught in other buildings down there chasing dope, trying to get high, and, you know, when got locked up, go to jail for a week or two, come back out, you know, get back in the block, all types of stuff, man. He just he just gone. You can see him just going in that damn respiral, man, like he just crashing, he's going to crash and burn. But... All of that come from vices, man, you know, getting getting caught up, not being able to focus on doing this time and trying to look for outlet. That ain't it ain't no outlet in prison. It ain't, man. It's like the Roach Motel, man. You check in, you can't check out. It is no outlet in prison. You got to do the time. You know, and you cannot let the time do you. That's it. It ain't no other way around it. You know, and Reese, he he just one of the dudes that just can't do it. You know what I'm saying? He can't. He 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 just the pressure build up on him, and he done got himself caught up in something there that he just can't get out of. Cause that ain't nothing you gonna start to do in prison, and then just say, oh, you made a mistake or no, nah, you you, that, you know, nah, he stuck. He stuck. You know, and your manhood ain't never coming back. That's gone forever. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um. Yeah, he was doing all of that foolishness, man, for the whole time that I was there. You know what I'm saying? Or that he was in the block with me all the way until I made parole and I left. When I left, he was still there with, you know what I'm saying, messing around, fooling around with Jake. And um, I can remember going into reentry, and I was in reentry, man. I had been in reentry for 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 a little second there, maybe about two months. And um, somebody told me that he was there. He had got transferred there because he on his way home, too. He on his way out, you know what I'm saying? He, I told you he didn't have that much time. He mandatory. He going to mandatory out. So they had switched him, sent him from, from not the way to uh, Greensville. Um, I heard before he left not away, he OD'd one time, you know what I'm saying? He, you know, they be having that fentanyl in there. So you got to understand, number one, you, you're doing something in prison that's illegal. So if you get caught, you're in trouble. You know what I'm saying? You 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 dealing with the dudes that you got to get it from, and you don't pay their money, you can get killed. You borrow money from people that, you know what I'm saying, if you don't pay their money, you can get killed. You dealing with dudes that's using you for some, some their own, you know, freaky thoughts or whatever. That can get dangerous. They don't want to kill you if you don't want to stop doing what you're doing. Um, it, it, it's just so many ways that he just in the mix, man, where he just, you know, playing Russian roulette with his life. And then you got them drugs coming in there and they got that fentanyl in there. That can take you straight out. And them dudes will still, with all of them odds against them, man, they still will, will, will indulge, man, and chase it down and try to get it before it's gone. And um, I heard he had OD'd on there, you know, uh, once, maybe even twice, and um, they had to um, revive him, and then they just give you a charge, and they lock you, right, lock you up. You do your time, you right back out there doing the same thing. And um, so when I'm on um, Greensville and reentry, I heard he was there, and um, I think either I seen him one time or somebody told him I was over there and he knew from Keith and he sent a message, man. He said, tell Keith, he said, what's up if I talk to Keith? So I was like, oh, yeah, well, we is up here. And, you know, I know all about him in my mind, but that ain't my, I don't want to be talking about nobody else, you know what I'm saying, unless it's with my selling something. So I won't tell nobody what was up with him. You come to a new camp, some dudes come to a new camp, they get a whole new identity. So I won't say nothing about it, you know what I'm saying, but, um, Man, I think I after I had found out he was there, it was probably less than a um, less than a couple of weeks later. Um, they was talking about some dudes that OD on the compound because they got the fentanyl and the drugs on there. You know what I'm saying? So some they said like three dudes at OD down there, so they must have got some drugs on there that was had a lot of that fentanyl in it, and dudes was getting it, and a couple of dudes had went out they had OD, so they was locking the compound down. You know what I'm saying? Because now they got to do a whole sweep, a whole shakedown because a couple of people done almost lost their life. So they got to address that. So when we get locked down, and um, I can remember they was coming around and then, you know, talking about, you know, the officers talking about, yeah, man, these dudes down there in the building, man, they, they, they down there doing them drugs, man. They the OD, man. One of them almost died and they had to rush them to the uh, hospital and da 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 So I'm like, yeah, so it's crazy. So when we ended up coming off lock, 
um, dudes who was on Not Away with me as well know Reese and told me that the one who almost died was Reese. Was Reese, man. Now he, man, you, he on his way home. And this is how he going home. So what, what, what are the chances that that's what he going to be doing when he out there? You know what I'm saying? And I pray for him, man, you know, because I don't, I don't like to see nobody go out like that or throw their life away. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he on the street now because like, he definitely had to be on the street. If he, if, you know, I hope ain't nothing happened to him. He, you know, take himself, you know, uh, out by messing with that foolishness, man, or either get locked back up, man. Because like I say, the dude got talent. He got talent. And, um... He 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 got skills, man, that he can really, you know, apply, man. And I apply that to the music that I heard out here today, the trends and stuff. He know music if he don't know nothing else. But that's what penitentiary would do to you if you let it. It will ruin your life, man, where you will be, you know, now you got things about you that you cannot change. You can never change. You know, he got a drug habit. He doing stuff that's outside of his manhood. He, you know, and this man ain't hadn't even hit 30 years old. You know what I'm saying? So this how the penitentiary will eat you up, man, and spit you out because they don't care nothing about you. And everybody in there will, will you know, feed their agenda and have nothing to do with yours and don't care what it costs you, don't care how much it hurts you, don't care. They don't nobody care, man. They don't care. You know what I'm saying? And he couldn't see that. And he didn't want to see that. Now, what he went to church every week, he was, that's the only discipline that I know he ever had. He going to church. He go every week, you know what I'm saying? Just as my celly, you know, Jerry did, just as Keith did. You know, he going to church if he on population. He may be high as gas, but he going to be sitting over there and not. And he going to have his Bible in his hand. But that's just how it is, man. But, um, yeah, he had OD'd. And, you know, luckily he, he snapped back from that. And I never really heard nothing else about him or know how he, you know, prevailed or whatever. But, um, yeah, but I say all of that, man, just to say this is how... It happens in the penitentiary, man. Just with a blink of your eye, then something can, um, you know, have you, you know, just just trying to get out of that misery, man. We're not realizing that there is no escape besides doing the time and being focused. Yeah, because the penitentiary ain't got love for nobody. You know, nobody. And then nobody in there has love for nobody. So you have to be focused, man. And I know it's easier said than done, but you just have to be focused. It's a fight. It's a fight. Every day of your life, it is a fight, you know. And not just physically, but mentally. You have to stay focused, man. You have to have hope. You got to believe that you're going to get out. You're going to do better. You're going to have your day. Because when you don't believe that, that's what leads you astray into other stuff. You got dudes that just, they just, not just that, they get into gambling and they can't pay their debts and they end up getting, you know, hit up or something or they end up getting hurt or, you know, dudes end up trying to take advantage of them because they can't pay. You got dudes that bet and can't pay. You got dudes that borrow and can't pay. All because they try to cure that boredom. They try to cure that, you know, um, that starving thing inside them to make you feel like you're dying, man, because it's just so gloomy. It's just so dead. It's just... You know, and you, you you try to get out of that, and you can't you can't get out of it. It's in your mind. You just have to take and put the, all of that energy into something positive. Working out, reading, studying, work on your case. You know, go to the law library. Don't none of us, obviously, we in there, we don't know nothing about the law. That's a challenge. Go learn about the law. You may can find something that can, you know, change your case, change your situations. But anything outside of that, man, them vices, they're going to get you late. They're going to get you late in a place that is um, unforgiving, period. You know, and I guess that's the um, that's the cycle, man, that Reese got um, caught up in, man. Hopefully he, you know, got out and got out of that. You know, who knows, man. Uh, maybe he'll see this video somewhere and he'll, um, you know, uh, reach out or something. I ain't got nothing against you, my brother. You know what I'm saying? Um, I saw your struggle, you know, but... Uh, I also saw behind your struggle. I know that you really want a bad dude, man. You just put yourself in a bad situation, man. It was hard to get out of. But, um, yeah, man, this is part of the penitentiary. This is part of the ugly truth about the penitentiary, man. And um, this is why I implore y'all to stay out here, man, to stay free, man, because um, so many um, 
bad things can happen, man, when you're in there, a whole slew of them. You know, this is just one part of it. But um, I just wanted to let y'all know that, man. And uh, like I say, it's, it's, it's a blessing in every lesson there, man. And the blessing is, man, that God felt like he had something more to do with his life. Because the times that he OD'd, the positions that he put himself in, um, any one of those situations could have ended up in a uh, result of him losing his life. And he didn't. His life was spared. And you got to believe that it was spared for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's the blessing, man. When you get another chance, take advantage of that chance, man. When you know better, do better. So hopefully that's what he's doing, man. But anyway, man, this is a video I wanted to, to, to put out there, man. Share this video with somebody you think might need to see it. Somebody you might think need to hear it. Because it's important, man. This could change somebody's perspective of what they doing out here so that they don't want to end up in here and have to deal with this type of stuff. So, man, share these videos, man. And uh, tell a friend to tell a friend, man. We on the road to 100K. We almost there. We going to get there, man. I have faith in you, TBP. Let's go get them. Boom, boom, boom. I see y'all in 24 hours, man. Y'all be safe, be smart, make good decisions, man. And by all means, please, 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 duck them hooks, man. Boom, 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 boom. They out there. Bam. Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.